Alright, so I've had several requests lately for longer videos that do more explanation, and I try to mix it up and do a little bit of everything on the channel. But uh, in this one, uh, this is going to be about an hour, and it goes through a cover that I did, and I had originally gone in and edited most of it and chopped it up in all the little spaces where I'm just staring at the screen trying to figure out what to do. I'd edited all that out, and a lot of the ums and ahs and things that I have a tendency to do, I try to cut most of that out. Premiere crashed uh, as soon as uh, at some point while it was rendering or something, and I lost all of it. So I don't have time to edit this again. <laughs> this is just the raw footage you guys are going to see. Uh, like I said, it's about an hour, and I walk through most of what I'm doing. It's narrated throughout, and uh, you'll also see my beard magically grow when the when the, when it starts <laughs> since I've got a haircut since then. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, let's get going. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, so in the video today, we're going to be doing a, a cover here, and this is from. Uh, if you go to evilmonkeyman.com, you can learn about this book. This is actually a student in my course that uh, is coloring the interiors, and uh, he wanted me to cover color the cover, which I thought was very cool. Uh, so this is Nicholas Seals. Like I said, evilmonkeyman.com if you want to check it out. So, you, know, you guys are seeing me right now, not this. There we go. That's what we're coloring. So, um... I've already uh, saved you the trouble of watching me change the colors of the flats, and uh, so I'm 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 thinking that so here's what we have going on. We've got the monkey man uh, saving the girl here, and we got some fire back here. So I was thinking, how about we do like a uh, kind of a backlit sort of thing, maybe. Um, there is, uh, obviously we've got some indication of some light from the, the left side, and we'll definitely use that, but I think I also want to do a um, uh, kind of a, uh, a rim light to kind of help separate him from the background too. And uh, so I'll just start playing around with this, we'll kind of see how it goes, and I'll try to talk you through most of it, and instead of, uh, I'll do a speed version too probably, but uh, I'll try to talk through this one. Since uh, I've got a little bit, actually, I'm waiting on some pages this week, so I've got time to handle this. So, um, got something weird going on with the flats. Maybe. Let me take a look. Sometimes it helps to see this stuff. Oh, no, no, it's not weird. It's just the way it is drawn. Okay. All right, so, um,. And one of the questions I get a lot, or you know, how do I, <laughs> just how do you start, you know? Um, uh, for something like a, a cover especially, um, and just about any, any scene, I'm going to try to uh, separate the planes out first. And I actually created a layer uh, just for this, basically. So um, I, I've got that separated on a separate layer so I can quickly grab the foreground or the background. And um, so I'm thinking in terms of how do I create as much depth as possible as quickly as possible and easily as possible. Maybe not quickly, but as easily as possible. And you know, we'll build on that. So uh, to start off with, um, I think I'm going to do some uh, color holds on the background and see what that looks like. That'll help create some depth. And I've started doing those early lately, the last couple of months, uh, because... I don't know. It's if you can, if you can accomplish what you want to accomplish, just by changing the color of the lines, or at least accomplish it to an extent, then um, you know it saves you the time of having to render those things. So um, or render them a little bit less, possibly. So um, I'm just going to start, and and the way that I do this, um, I'm just I'm adding uh, to the selection here with holding down Shift and creating all of these little shapes through here. So basically what I'm doing is all of the inks in the background is going to be selected separately from the foreground. And we'll change the color of those lines using uh, 
that concept of atmospheric perspective again we've talked about that a couple of times this week on the channel I'm gonna try to listen to music and talk at the same time I don't know if I can do that or not <laughs> we'll see And I like to do like big complex selections in um, in sections. Uh, it just to me, it's I'm not having to think about exactly you know making sure every one is perfect. And if I mess up, I don't have to redo very much. So uh, I don't know. It's just a habit that I've always had that I've just kept. <laughs> We gotta do something about these yellow shoes. She looks it doesn't look right. <laughs> Forgot to change the color of the shoes. And I'm just gonna get on top of the inks here and just fill that with the color and see if I missed anything. Um you can also use the uh, the quick mask tool, but sometimes it's easier to check it another way. All right, so that looks like it works. I'm gonna save this as another selection. Whoops. Uh, let's see, holds. BG selection. That way, if I need to go back and grab them again, it will be easily to easy to fix that. So, and I've got an action that I run that copies the inks to a channel and then back to a layer. And I don't even remember what all it does. I've been using it so long. Uh, let's see. That's how I do my color holds. So, I I, I have that uh, that action in my course. If you if you sign up for that, you get all the actions and whatnot. All right, so it's just kind of a brownish color in the background now. And I don't want it. Now, this green looks too green to me. I'm just going to desaturate that a little bit. At least in the background, I'm going to leave the more saturated green up front. And I like to work on backgrounds first, usually, because to me, if, I, if I'm going to light my figure, like I want to, I want to have the environment created first if that makes sense <laughs> so then I can put them in the environment that's just it makes sense to me anyway keep this background pretty simple debating about brushings here this is going to get a regular soft round brush for this part, why is that multiplying? Oh, because I grabbed the wrong brush, that's why. <laughs> I've got a, that shadow multiply preset is, is a um, uh, 
brush set to multiply. You just, it, to me, it's it's easier to just grab a um, a tool preset instead of having to come up here and change that and then the setting and change it back and all that stuff. So I just don't bother. I'll probably end up tweaking some of this separately later. Um, you don't have to be at least. I mean, some colorists work that way, where they're just they're just kind of married to whatever you know they put on the screen. As far as um, whether it's um, they don't do a lot of adjustments after rendering. Uh, and some, like myself, I like to make adjustments afterwards sometimes. So there's really not a right or wrong answer. You just have to be careful using. Um, you know adjustment sometimes because you can lose the contrast you probably originally intended that you wanted so I'll bear that in mind I want these clouds to be different color than the smoke for sure to separate that out too so we're not confused about this being uh, clouds I guess if the light's coming, I guess I need to figure out is what's lighting him, the light from the sun, or is it the light from, is it another fire, or whatever's going on there, I have to figure that out. We'll go ahead and light this on the other side, though. And I'm also not really zooming up a tremendous amount at this stage, like I might later, or when I go when I put in details, you know, like these little edges here, um, you know, I'll get closer, but. But at this stage, it's still pretty early, so. And this is all just normal mode. There's really nothing, I'm, I'm not doing anything fancy with modes at this point, at least with the clouds. I'm also coloring this in CMYK, which I've been playing around with lately. Um, you know, if you want to cause a full-on colorist debate on Twitter, just throw that bomb out there. Which is better, CMYK or RGB? <laughs> and... Uh, People are passionate about that. I don't think it matters a ton. I guess it just depends on what you're used to. It does have a different feel. Um, I think I talked about this in a video already this week, but it's hard to describe. You don't get as much of the color modes, like color dodge and hard light and screen just don't do what they do in RGB. Um, but I like the way Multiply works better. So you sort of have to manually choose a lot of those colors that I would that I would that I used to 
I haven't said that I'm completely switching, but you have to think more about the choices you're making instead of letting the color modes work for you, if that makes sense. And with this, I don't I don't know. I haven't really tried fire yet <laughs> in CMYK. So I don't know. We'll see. Right now I'm just trying to figure out that brush is kind of too hard. Something else I've been playing around with lately is is doing uh, rendering with uh, like a levels adjustment on a mask. So like, show you what I mean. So I'll grab just like a doesn't really matter like a part of a tree background there, and then create a new levels adjustment and kind of get it close to create the color that I want it to be, and. Uh, is something about like that yeah and then just delete that mask or fill it in and then um, I guess I could have just created a new mask let's see so I'm on the levels adjustment I'm gonna hit the little mask button which is a, a rectangle with a circle in it and then fill that with black and now I can just paint on that mask and that color, let me get something you guys can actually see. And that color will be anywhere I put it. Regardless of what's underneath it, I've now got a brighter version of my base color. Um, it's not perfect for everything because you don't want just a, just a flat color with it. So um, you might want to mix that with another color and instead. But uh, for a background like this, I think this will work. trying to decide which brush I want to use. That works. This is like, a, this is a Kyle Webster brush. It's got a little bit of texture to it, but it's not like overwhelming.
But it's just got a cool, like, kind of textury, fuzzy feel to it, which is good for, um, you know, good for stuff like trees and dirt and textured stuff. You can also play around with color modes on these, which I haven't really done a whole lot of. Um, I think that's the screen mode. You can always adjust the opacity if you don't like it, if it's too strong. I don't want there to be to, I don't want there to be a ton of contrast back there because obviously it's kind of in the background. And I can kind of help frame you know the upper you know the, the, the focal point of the um, page by doing a um, uh, kind of like a halo effect around it make it a little bit darker around them in some of those places it kind of helps to frame things so like i could get a like say i just want to do the trees let's see I'm doing this on a multiply layer um And I can just paint this away where I don't want it, which is most of this. I just want to really um, keep just the darkest parts kind of at the bottom. So it's pretty subtle. I mean, you know, just right there along the edges and at the bottom, but makes it more interesting. And I want to darken I want to darken this thing in the front too to kind of help frame frame the action here and if you guys have questions like I said feel free to ask questions in the comments people always do that's fine I just realized that, um, like I've got, um, well, I'll show you. This is going to look crazy, probably. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't really see it. I've got my OBS open next to me on the 
uh, on my monitor, and it's sort of acting like a, um, a navigation window. So it's kind of neat. I can, it's, I don't I can step away from the canvas, quote unquote, without having to actually zoom all the way out. Uh, Photoshop has a uh, window for this. You get a window and go to Navigator. Uh, see, I usually don't keep this open. I just want to show you guys what it looks like. So it's kind of like a little mini uh, version so that when you're up close and doing details and doing lighting or whatever, you can see how it's going to look in the final uh, version down there in the corner. So that's kind of neat. I might try that for a while. It depends if I've, I, I can put it in different places, but um, if I'm using a ton of layers, then uh, I might, you know, close it sometimes. All right, so I'm getting happy with the background. We're getting there. I'm going to lighten these lines even more where the clouds are. That creates even more depth here, basically. Yeah, so that looks cool. I don't know if those trees are going to stay that green. I don't know. Something about it's not clicking with me. I will leave it there for now. We can always adjust it later. So now, what next? Is this multiply? Let's see. I'm just going to try something. I want to see how dark this multiply layer is or if I need to make a new one. Nope, that should be good. All right, so this is something I've been playing around with um, just the last couple of weeks. Um, I know other people that have done this. Uh, I can't remember who I was watching. Uh, and it's a pretty common technique. I've just never tried it. So I am first going to select my foreground, which is basically just the two characters. I just, let me fix these damn shoes. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. No more yellow shoes. Someone's been watching this just going, fix the damn shoes. I would. Okay. So, foreground. I'm going to fill this in completely uh, on, the, on the multiply layer I created earlier. Paint it completely in. Okay, so the entire foreground is now in shadow. Now you're thinking, why would I want to do that? So now I can, I can basically use this as my quote-unquote base color and 
the only thing I have to do to uh, remove it in places, like say I wanted to render something, then I can go to that mask on the multiply layer and paint, and you're actually getting that the original base color out of it without having to pick colors over and over. And then you can get on top of this, of course, and change you know that after the fact if you wanted. But um, let's see. So I don't know. It's it's a neat way to. It's just a different way. To, there's many ways to do this crap, and I keep finding new ways to play around with it. So um, so the background is um, pretty bright with the fire and the trees and everything. So it'll be a little bit darker overall, but of course there'll be more contrast and more bright spots, uh, you know, in this area here where it really matters. So, um, so yeah, you can still go in and pick your base color underneath, but then go to your multiply layer to paint away here. So, um, and someone told me in the comments the other day, there's a command to change the color from white to black automatically or whatever, but I've, I'm using that command for something else now, <laughs> and so uh, anyway, that's um, it's just a habit. I know I'm probably driving someone crazy, but all right. So I'm basically just on black now, using a uh, or yeah, did it? Why is that white? There we go. Make sure this is working. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to just kind of do some soft, kind of overall, uh, just getting rid of parts of those, um, uh, parts of the shadows, but leaving a lot of it, you can still see there's a, quite a bit of it still there, but starting to lighten that up. And I'm just going to start with the skin. And what brush do I want to use? This is a Keenan uh, Keenan Lafferty brush. And this is a Borodante brush. If you heard me talk about him on this channel a lot lately. I still I love his videos. So I'm trying to leave this a little rough because we are talking about fur here. I can go back to my uh, levels layer that's brightening things and I'm still not really having to uh, pick many colors here. This brush is a little too sensitive. I wish I was better at um, the Photoshop brush engine. Like I'm not really that great at like creating my own brushes and that kind of stuff I just borrow others <laughs> and you'll notice that I'm not you know a lot of I talk about this a lot on this channel but a lot of beginner colorists would would just start uh, rendering every single muscle the exact same way and that's um, not really how light works. So, and, and especially as from a storytelling standpoint, I want more contrast at the top. So that's why I'm doing a little bit more on a little bit brighter up here, but less so 
any other places. Even though technically this is the same quote unquote, you know, color, local color. I'm just putting little dots of places where the fur is like catching the light. I think it looks cool. And something else to keep in mind too is make sure that you're not just coloring every single surface the same way because light obviously acts very different on certain surfaces than, than others. Like I think I want to use a bit of a harder brush here since the skin is smoother so I don't really mind the harder edges because the uh, uh, it's gonna the edges are going to be a little bit how, does, how do I explain that um, the terminators the, which is what they call it the, the area between the light and the shadow is going to be a little bit sharper um, I don't remember why that is the case uh, something about the texture of it <laughs> but this is how skin works relative to fur anyway not necessarily all the time but Gonna desaturate this blue a little bit. Make it a little bit darker. Gonna make another levels adjustment here just to see. Show you guys what you can do here. So if I want brighter highlights, again I just make another adjustment and go brighter. And I can paint with that. So right now I'm just kind of testing the color there. And I'm going to rename this to bright because this is my bright highlight. And we'll call this one mid. And this is multiply, might as well.
Sometimes Photoshop acts so strange. Whether I choose white or black, it doesn't seem to care. I don't understand why it does this. I guess it's kind of a middle, middle tone. Yeah. Which means this should be darker, but it's not. Sorry, I haven't had much to say here. So this is uh, pretty much the same thing I've been doing uh, on the other pieces, just brushing out the the lights that I want, and then adding more shadows. So I've kind of painted out the shadow on top, and then can go into one of my other rendering layers and add more light if I want. I don't think I like that the smoke is the same, almost the same hue as he is. That's what's throwing me off. I just realized what I was doing. That's better. Alrighty. What is left? Her skin. We're almost done here. I'm terrible at rendering sideways. <laughs>
Alright, so I think I'm pretty much done with the main rendering. Uh, I should do something with these nails. As soon as I said that, I noticed. <laughs> So I'm going to start kind of goofing around with some, I'm still not, there's something about this I'm still not 100% satisfied with. So I'm going to play around with some other color combinations and filters and whatnot, and I'll probably just speed through this part because it is getting late and it's time to wrap this up. So I might see you at the end.
All right, I think I'm happy with it. <laughs> we'll send it over to Nicholas and see what he thinks. And uh, thank you for watching, as always. If you uh, want to learn more about this stuff, there's a link in the description to my coloring course and all all the resources, all the resources I'm using, Kyle's brushes and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, be sure to check that out. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of this stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.